Hello and welcome, we're at the track with the Sport of Kings. Coming up, a packed presentation, racing from Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica, where a young lady wins her first race as a jockey. We have Caribbean jockeys winning stakes races in North America, and the coat American Pharaoh steps closer to winning the Triple Crown in USA's horse racing. We start off with Trinidad and Tobago Santa Rosa Park, where the claiming apprentice Javika Budram Singh landed a four-timer, including the main event, race eight, aboard Canfield Casino. And they're still to get to Harry could dance. Harry could dance turns into the home stretch, a leader by two lengths. Here comes Canfield Casino on the outside, stable mate. The favorite, Sweet Sin City, is in some problems. Back in third, and Criminal Intent has ducked away. It's Canfield Casino now hitting the front and drawing away from. Uh, that's uh, the one on the outside. One for the road is running on, but Canfield Casino has this race wrapped up. Canfield Casino punch right out to score by two lengths in the end. Eddie Arno there with a call. Javika Budram Singh, cousin of reigning champion jockey Brand Budram Singh, gets the surprise win aboard the 8 to 1 bet Canfield Casino. One of four wins on the card for Budram Singh. The winner clocking 1 minute 12.20 seconds for six furlongs in a two length win for trainer Harold Chady and owner Dave Chady. In Jamaica, the latest group in the jockeys training school had race riding experience in Saturday's fourth race and it was girl power on display. Melissa Ward winning aboard the 8 to 1 bet Sporting Clay. As they're about now to come into the lane, Sporting Clay battling wicked tough for it. Seal the deal just in behind them now, trying to reel them in. Grand Train switched toward the center of the course. Awesome Rocket racing on his outside. In behind them, that Sprouting Wings is the main contenders. As up front, Sporting Clay now has escaped the field. A furlong to run. It is Sporting Clay with that lead. Seal the deal chasing along with wicked tough and a Grand Train, but it's Sporting Clay. They're inside the last 16th, and Sporting Clay is opening up on them sporting clay wins by maybe 10 seal the deal is second the 21 year old ward pulling clear for a huge win with the 8 to 1 bet sporting clay as she continues in the jockey school ward joining Isel kawi and georgina surgeon as local women to score wins at caymanis park ward's mount trained by philip lee for owner delroy war the 5 to 2 favorite sealed the deal third nine lengths the victory margin the time for six furlongs, one minute, 17.20 seconds. Up north, Caribbean jockeys Rajiv Mirage and Rico Walcott had added money wins. Let's head first to New York's Belmont racetrack, where the Jamaican Mirage used a smooth rail run to win the wait a while stakes aboard the 5-1 to one bet Celestine. Lady Shipman pressured here by Sunset Glow as the field comes into the stretch. It's Lady Shipman with the lead. Sunset Glow on the outside. Celestine is rallying down at the rail. Then Isabella sings and Stella Street. They're moving for the 16th pole. Here comes Celestine coming on through to take over the lead. And Celestine wins the way to Wild Stakes. No riding assignments at the Preakness this year for Mirage, but he uses the weekend to make the headlines at Belmont, where he's a regular. Celestine wins with authority at 5-1, to one, relegating the 7-5 favorite Sunset Glow to second. Mirage gets his mount home in 121.06 for six furlongs on the Belmont turf, scoring by a length and a half for trainer Bill Mott and owner James Brand. At Edmonton's Northlands Park, the Barbadian rider Rico Walcott had an easy front-running win aboard the seven-year-old mare Rock and Glory in the Wild Rose Stakes. Let's get the home stretch there. And it's Rock and Glory sent off at three to five. Down the side of the track will be Canaveral Leader and then Holiday Bay. But Rock and Glory, no mistakes in the park debut. She'll win handily. Rock and Glory wins the Wild Rose. Canaveral Leader will be second. Rock and Glory slams the field as the hot odds on favorite. The 32nd Wild Rose Stakes turned into a no contest as the champion jockey Walcott wins by three and a half lengths and clocks 1 minute 10.10 seconds for six furlongs for trainer Theodore Robertino and owner's Mercedes Stables. Talking about the Wild Rose Stakes, the Run for the Roses winner, American Farah, made the Preakness look easy. Gate to wire in sloppy conditions at Pimlico and step closer to the Triple Crown. American Farrow is the leader as the field rounds the far turn. Dortmund is on the outside running in second position and Divining Rod is right there. Mr. Z is next and the others are far behind and they're coming to the top of the stretch. Three quarters in one, 11 and two. And they're into the stretch in the slop at Pimlico and American Farrow has pulled away to a two and a half length lead over Divining Rod. And then it's Dortmund, tail of verve, a huge long shot is making a move on the far outside but American Farrow is all by himself 
He is five lengths in front as they come to the wire. And American Pharaoh and Victor Espinosa have won the Preakness over Taylor Bird. American Pharaoh wins handsomely as a favorite. Seven lengths in front of his nearest rivals, talking 158.46 for a mile and three sixteenths for trainer Bob Baffert. Now, since the last Triple Crown winner affirmed in 1978, 13 horses have won two legs of the Triple Crown before failing to complete the series in Belmont. American Farah has looked really impressive in his Kentucky and Preakness wins, but several of his rivals in the Belmont Stakes on June 6, when he'll have to be at his best for the third time in just six weeks, will be fresh, having not raced in the first two legs. All the best to American Farah and his Triple Crown bid. And before we go, more on that incredible ride by Patrick Husbands at Woodbine in Toronto, Canada. After he was bounced in race four Friday and losing his irons, his feet knocked out of the stirrups, Barbadian Husbands, who is celebrating his 42nd birthday this weekend, gathered himself in the saddle to avoid a disaster and then rallied his horse cowboy style for an astounding winning run. Chandler is on the attack on the outside. Cosmic Charlie's back in third now, a wide march to my tune, and that white cap is joining the fray. Line of Judah, you judge is right there as well. Five of them right there as they turn for home, and the Featherlands is trying to close from off the pace. Lion of Judah comes on in that blue cap. And to the outside is March to my tune. Cosmic Charlie trying to be resurgent between horses. Dives inside for the final 16th. Cosmic Charlie flying late as the Featherlands. Way outside the Barber of Brazil. A wild finish. Husbands also suggested hmm, it wasn't a big deal. I was lucky to stay on my horse. You know, I mean, uh, I just see the ground. And I was just holding on for dear life about two strides. And I finally um, get back on and get my horse balanced and then I decided well, I gotta go for the cash. I have a two to three strides and then, and then I get back I get back on the horse and stuff like that. I ask my horse and he responds. So from there I was just looking to win from there. In terms of halfway down the lane, you know what I mean? And I give him about two left hand and he responds very fast. So I'm like, let's go boy, let's go, let's go. So, it was a proud moment, especially after the race, all the riders and everybody it was just screaming and yelling. Like, they never seen anything like that yet. A wild finish! You thought he had seen it all with Patrick, a record eight-time Sovereign Award winner as Canada's outstanding jockey, but Bommel comes up with another gem. We've been at the track covering top stories in the sport of kings. Check us out again next week.